Hello there, very good evening and welcome to the news tonight here on Raj Sabha TV. I'm Tracy Shilshi and in the next 30 minutes I'll be getting the day's top stories starting with the headlines. A day after Army Chief General Darbeel Singh accused Union Minister and retired General V.K. Singh of victimization, Congress asked Prime Minister Narendra Modi to take action against him. Local residents in Kashmir's Pulwama district protest against late-night searches by the army. A civilian is killed in clashes, taking the death toll in the ongoing unrest to 66. Suspended en masse for a week, DMK MLA staged protests outside Tamil Nadu Assembly. MLAs claimed that they were denied entry into the Assembly premises. And ending India's medal drought at Rio, Sakshi Khanna creates, uh, Sakshi Malik creates history by becoming the first Indian woman wrestler to win an Olympic medal. Haryana government and IOA announce huge monetary rewards. The top story, Army Chief Dalbir Singh submitted a document in Supreme Court accusing Union Minister VK Singh of victimization when he was the Army Chief. Dalbir Singh's allegation comes in an affidavit that he filed in response to a petition moved by retired Lieutenant General Ravi Dastane, who alleged favoritism during his selection as the army commander. He also alleged that General VK Singh tried to stop his promotion. It is the first case of an army chief going public with allegations against his predecessor. Dalbir Singh was placed under a discipline and vigilance ban by the then chief of staff VK Singh in 2012 for his alleged failure of command and control. This was followed by a court of inquiry into an operation carried out in Jorhat in Assam. General V.K. Singh is currently the Minister of State for External Affairs. Meanwhile, the government is yet to decide on the level of India's participation at the Sark Finance Minister's meeting in Islamabad later this month. This comes amid indications that Finance Minister Arun Jaitley may skip the conference due to the strain and ties between the two countries. India rejected Pakistan's proposal to hold foreign secretary-level talks on Kashmir on Wednesday, making it clear that terrorism was central to any talks with Islamabad. Foreign Secretary S. Jay Shankar had responded to Pakistan Foreign Secretary Azaz Ahmed Chaudhry's invitation, expressing willingness to travel to Islamabad. He, however, maintained that Pakistan had no local stand in addressing any aspect of the situation in Jammu and Kashmir, which he stressed is an internal matter of India. He also said that he looks forward to discussing with his counterpart the earliest possible vacation of Pakistan's illegal occupation of the Indian state of Jammu and Kashmir. Foreign Secretary also underlined the importance of bringing to justice all those guilty in Pakistan for the Mumbai terrorist attack of 2008 and the Pathan Court air base attack. He said that his visit should provide the opportunity to receive a briefing from Pakistan's Foreign Secretary on progress in this regard. All I can say is that as of now, no decision has been taken as yet on the level of our participation in that particular meeting. And as far as Prime Minister's uh, visit to Pakistan for the SARC summit is concerned, you would appreciate that uh, decisions and announcements uh, of such uh, nature are not made so much far in advance. We'll keep an eye out on developments on that front. Meanwhile, the latest from Kashmir and a lecturer was killed and 18 others injured in clashes between security forces and protesters in the crew area of Pulwama district late last night. The protesters were opposing a search operation where curfew and restrictions remain in force for the 41st day today. Clashes broke out between security forces and protesters in the crew area of Pulwama district late on Wednesday night. A lecturer was killed and 18 people were injured in the incident that was triggered by local residents opposing an army search operation. It was a, a joint patrol which has gone there. Thereafter, uh, one death has taken place. I'm aware of that. It has happened this morning. So we are looking into it. It's too soon for me to be able to say anything, but I assure you that uh, uh, we have a due process of uh, investigation which, which is kicked in whether or not anyone asks that inquiry of us, and we will look into the matter. According to the residents, the army was conducting house-to-house -house searches for youngsters who were leading the protests in the area. Clashes broke out when they resisted the late-night searches. 
In the violence, 30-year-old Shabir Ahmed Monga, a contractual lecturer, was killed. Instructions to army soldiers are very clear. We do not get involved in the law and order situation at all. Wherever we go for patrolling, we take a law and order component along with us, be it police or CRPF or both. At, at, uh, at several places, I have so many of my men admitted in hospitals because we've had uh, people who've fractured their arms or have had sutures and stitches. There are so many injuries to army personnel also because we keep taking the hit of the stone pelters and we have nothing to respond. We, have, we don't have any non-lethal weapons to respond. The 18 injured people have been hospitalized. Curfew and restrictions are in force in many areas in Srinagar district, Anantak town and Pampur police stations for the 41st day. A situation that has led to the center facing heavy criticism from the opposition parties. Jammu Kashmir or Ladakh mein agar aaj sthiti sarkar ke niyantran mein nahi, to uske liye Modi sarkar jumewari hai. Kam se kam apni vifalta ka tokra hamare sar madne ki napak koshish mat kariye. Jammu Kashmir mein vastu sthiti ke liye, jahan 70 के करीब लोगों की मौत हो चुकी 6000 घायल हैं 41 दिन से कर्फ्यू है क्या इसके लिए भाजपा जुम्मेवार है पीडीपी बीजेपी की सरकार जुम्मेवार है मोदी सरकार जुम्मेवार है या कांग्रेस जुम्मेवार है There is heavy deployment of security forces on all roads leading to the local office of the United Nations Military Observers Group at Sunawar The authorities strictly imposed night curfew in the city in view of the separatists' call for a march to the UN office over a 72-hour period that started on Wednesday. Narendra Modi ji ko Pak occupied Kashmir ki jada chinta hai. Unko wo dhanyavad dete hain, badhai dete hain. Baluchistan ko dhanyavad aur badhai dete hain. Lekin Hindustan ke Kashmiriyon se baat karne tayar nahi hai. अगर यहां पर विश्वास लोगों के मन में कायम करना है तो बातचीत के जरिए से ही हो सकता है प्रधानमंत्री जी के इस जो कन्फ्रंटेशनिस्ट एक बयान आया है इससे हालात सुधरेंगे नहीं बिगड़ेंगे द डेथ टोल इन द अनरेस्ट कंटिन्यूइंग इन द कश्मीर वैली एवर सिंस द किलिंग ऑफ मिलिटेंट बुरहान वानी ऑन जुलाई 8 हैज रीच्ड 64 टू ऑफ द डेड विक्टिम्स आर पुलिस पर्सनल मेनी हंड्रेड्स आर रिपोर्टेड इंजर्ड Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. On to more national news than a day after all 89 DMK MLAs were suspended for a week in the Tamil Nadu Assembly, party members led by leader of opposition MK Stalin held protests at the State Assembly today. The MLAs alleged they were denied entry into the Assembly premises. Accusing Tamil Nadu Chief Minister J. Jalalitha of being dictatorial, the DMK MLAs sat on a dharna. Speaker P. Dhanapal had ordered the en masse eviction and suspension yesterday after DMK members strongly protested against remarks made by a ruling AI DMK member apparently ridiculing Stalin. DMK MLAs then insisted on expunging the remarks even after the Speaker rejected those demands and asked them to cooperate for the smooth conduct of the House. Later, the Governor moved a resolution suspending all the DMK members for a week, which was passed by a voice vote. Several villages in the border areas of Uttar Pradesh were inundated with the rise of water levels because of torrential rains for the past four days. A youth was washed away in Chitragut district and several shops and temples were submerged in flood water and river banks. Rescue operations are reportedly underway and relief is being distributed in the area. Local residents, however, claimed that the authorities were not of much help as people remained stranded in several villages without food and water. They alleged that they were being compelled to fend for themselves. कुछ गांव है वहां पे सिकरोहा है चमरोहा है गिदुरवा है रानी कल्याणपुर है जो जहां पे बरदाह नदी के कारण जो बाढ़ की स्थिति वहां पर हो गई थी और लगातार दो दिनों की बारिश के कारण स्थिति काफी भयावह हो गई थी लेकिन ये काफी अच्छा रहा कि वहां कोई जनहानि नहीं हुई है कोई पशु हानि नहीं हुई है एनडीआरएफ को बुला लिया गया है इसके अलावा फ्लड प्लाटून को बुला लिया गया है दुकानदार ही लोग हैं जो अपना प्राइवेट नाव वगैरह बुलवा के अपना जो कार बचाव कर रहे हैं जहां तक उनकी कोशिश हो बचाने की नहीं बाकी प्रशासन की तरफ से कोई भी व्यवस्था नहीं एंड आई विल टेक यू थ्रू व्हाट एल्स इज मेकिंग न्यूज़ अक्रॉस द कंट्री इन नेशन वाइड
Delhi's anti-corruption branch today carried out searches at the office of the Delhi Commission for Women. They followed a complaint by former DCW chief Barkha Shukla Singh alleging nepotism and favoritism by its current chairperson Swati Maliwal in appointing employees to the DCW. In another complaint, former Delhi Chief Secretary Omesh Segal had also alleged that Maliwal was misusing her official position by issuing show cause notice to a club of which he is a member. Congress President Sonia Gandhi was again admitted to the Sri Rangaram Hospital today, two days after she was discharged. According to hospital sources, she had been taken in for minor treatment procedure. She had visited the hospital yesterday for removal of her stitches from a surgery that she had undergone during her 11-day stay there. Rebutting the National Green Tribunal's report on the destruction of the Yamuna floodplains, the Art of Living Foundation said that the panel's findings were unscientific and biased. The team refuted all the allegations of the tribunal. Talking of further action, the team said that it would approach the NGT to look into the report and appoint an unbiased committee to examine the case. In Mumbai, five occupants of a sedan died when the driver lost control and hit a tree. The incident occurred in the suburbs of Villepale on the Western Express Highway. While four occupants died on the spot, the fifth succumbed to his injuries in a hospital. The car was completely smashed on impact with its roof almost ripped off. With a quick break here, we'll be back with more news in a bit. Stay with us. What do you think are our major challenges in terms of higher education? Major challenge is uh, improper recognition of what an education costs. I feel that the government is not investing enough in higher education. A lot of our problems can be addressed very effectively by science. I think a career in science is a tremendous privilege to have. Watch Eureka with Professor Ram Ramaswamy, President, Indian Academy of Sciences, only on Rajya Sabha TV. Welcome back. Let's get to some international news now. And at least three people were killed and more than 50 wounded today in a car bomb attack on a police station in a Turkish city. The attack occurred hours after a similar bombing killed three people elsewhere in the region. No one, though, has claimed responsibility for this attack yet. At least three people were killed and more than 50 were injured in a car bomb attack on a police station in the Turkish city of Elazig on Thursday. Smoke was seen rising from the area after the blast, while the facade of the police station suffered extensive damage. No one immediately claimed responsibility for the attack. Turkish Defence Minister Fikri Isik, however, said the Kurdistan Workers' Party was behind the attack. The group, which is deemed a terrorist organization by the United States and the European Union, has frequently carried out attacks on Turkish police stations in recent months. In a similar attack on Wednesday, three people were killed and 40 injured in the eastern province of Van near the Iranian border. No one immediately claimed responsibility for that attack either. Bureau report, Rajya Sabha TV. More than 250,000 people have died and millions have been displaced since the Syrian conflict began. And the city of Aleppo has been one of the fiercest battlegrounds between the regime of President Bashar al-Assad and the rebels. In recent months, the city has now been in news for the humanitarian crisis that is only worsening. Latest footage from the besieged town shows the grim reality of the civil war. <laughs> The grim reality of the ongoing war in Syria can clearly be seen in the faces of these children. Covered in dust from head to toe, these children were pulled out of the rubble of a building in Aleppo after it was hit 
by air strikes. The little boy sits dazed and silent, trying to get a grip on what's happening around him, trying to wipe the blood from his badly injured face. Barely four years old, more than half his life has been spent in the violent zone. Aleppo has seen some of the worst fighting since the civil war began in August 2014. The fight for control over the city between the government and the rebels has intensified in recent weeks. Hundreds have died and many others are deprived of basic necessities. As we are asking, and I again insist on behalf of the Secretary General of the UN and of all the Syrian people, to have a 48 hours pause in Aleppo to start with, that would require some heavy lifting from not only the two co-chairs, but also those who have an influence on those who are fighting on the ground. The United Nations says that two million people lack access to clean water in Aleppo, creating a risk of disease. Technicians are not being allowed access to repair electricity networks that drive water pumping stations. Eight convoys have also not reached Syria's besieged towns in August. Due to the lack of a pause, no humanitarian aid is reaching anywhere Syria at the moment except the resort. And Aleppo is still eastern Aleppo besieged and western Aleppo in threat of becoming besieged. The violence, however, is not restricted to Aleppo. This footage shows the immediate aftermath of airstrikes in Damascus, serving as a tragic reminder that the conflict is nationwide, from Aleppo in the north to homes in central Syria and Damascus further south. The dire situation has forced another appeal from the UN Secretary General, who warns of an unprecedented humanitarian catastrophe in Syria. He has also urged Russia and the United States to quickly reach a deal on a ceasefire in the war-torn country. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And now let's give you some international news updates in Global Buzz. In a survey conducted by the Economist Intelligence Unit, Paris saw the biggest decline in a poll in the most pleasant uh, poll of the most pleasant cities to live in. The city dropped 3.7 percent on the scale, ranking 32 out of 140 cities. Paris featured on the list of the 10 cities that faced the biggest decline, such as Damascus, Kiev, Detroit, and Tripoli. The study blamed this on the mounting number of terrorist attacks taking place in the city and in other parts of the country over the past three years. Pakistan's Election Commission has asked its Prime Minister Nawaz Sharif to reply on petitions filed by opposition parties seeking his disqualification for hiding information about his alleged offshore wealth revealed by the Panama Papers leak within 20 days. The Commission also issued notices to Sharif's son-in-law, Captain uh, retired Captain Mohammad Safdar, Finance Minister Ishaq Dar, Punjab Chief Minister Shehbaz Sharif and his son Hamza Shehbaz. The much-awaited Hindu Marriage Bill 2016 was finally tabled in Pakistan's National Assembly after decades of inaction. The bill seeks to give a legal framework to the marriages in the minority community in Pakistan. Punjab, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Balochistan have consented to the federal government formulating a Hindu marriage law that will, then that will be adopted while Sindh had formulated its own Hindu marriage registration law. A storm which started yesterday night hit parts of Washington, leaving thousands without power. Heavy rain, lightning and strong winds caused power outages and damage to homes and buildings throughout the Washington, D.C. area. Some small flooding was also reportedly registered throughout the city. The forecasters fear showers and thunderstorms later this week. Typhoon Dianmu is scheduled to take, uh, make landfall in Guangdong province in China this evening. The typhoon is expected to cause heavy and sustained rainfall over Guangdong, Hainan and Jiangxi. Entire villages submerged in the Leju Peninsula owing to heavy rainfall. After leaving Guangdong, the typhoon is expected to gather strength as it crosses the Gulf of Tonkin before making landfall in Vietnam. Finally, let's talk about Rio and All Eyes' Arun Shatla PV Sindhu, who is up against Japan's Nozomi Okuhara in a semi final match of women's singles.
Sindhu won the first set 21-19 and is at the moment leading in the second one as well, 19-10. Uh, that's the current figures that we're getting in the second set. A win, of course, in today's match will ensure at least a silver for India. The win of the match will face Spain's Carolina Marin in the final. Uh, Marin did beat Chinese Li Shiro in the first semi-final that was held earlier in the evening. In the women's... Um, all right, so now in the women's freestyle wrestling, Babita Kumari lost to Greece's Maria... Prevo Lariki, 5-1 in the round of 16 of the 53 kilograms category. Kumari was eliminated from the competition after Prevo Lariki lost her quarterfinal match, ending hope of a repercharge. And there's good news, another medal, def medal definitely for India because uh, Sindhu has won the match, the semi-final match against uh, a Japanese opponent, winning both the sets uh, and the second one, in fact, easily, comparatively, the first set, of course, was 21-19. The second one, 21-10. So there you go. She will now be heading to the final. Her first Olympic, and she's heading for the final. And definitely a medal coming towards India's way again. After yesterday, Sakshi Malik scored her first bronze medal in wrestling. Bharat ki ek bala. ओलंपिक के बैडमिंटन के फाइनल में इससे पहले साइना नेवाल को लंदन ओलंपिक्स में ब्रॉन्ज मेडल मिला था उससे बेहतर प्रदर्शन करते हुए समय पीवी सिंधु ने फाइनल में प्रवेश किया ये देखिए खुशी के शार्ड कैसे पीवी सिंधु ने आखरी पॉइंट लिया I can't contain my excitement. Meanwhile, India's wait for a medal, like we said, at Rio Olympics uh, did end on Wednesday after grappler Sakshi Malik won the bronze medal in the 58 kilogram freestyle wrestling. The 23-year-old Haryana girl made a sensational comeback win over her Kyrgyzstan opponent. Take a look. It would have been yet another disappointing day for India at Rio if not for wrestler Sakshi Malik, who created history by becoming the first Indian female wrestler to win an Olympics medal. Malik won a bronze medal in the women's 58 kg freestyle event after beating Kyrgyzstan's Aisulu Tinibekova 8 5 in a thrilling match. Sakshi was 0 5 down in the first half of the game but made a sensational comeback to win the match in the final seconds. Sakshi is only the fourth Indian woman athlete to win an Olympic medal after Karanam Maleshwari, Mary Kom and Saina Nehwal. I have been thinking about this for 12 years. I have been thinking about wrestling in the morning. I have been thinking about my country and I have been thinking about it today. So I have been thinking about the whole country and I have been the Rota girl lost 2-9 in the quarterfinals to Russia's Valeria Koblova, but got a second chance in the repertoire when her conqueror reached the final. Her victory brought cheers to the Indian contingent that had endured agonizing 11 days without a medal. All the best and good and a lot of Sakshi's win sent a wave of jubilation in the country. Indian President Prada Mukherjee and Prime Minister Narendra Modi also congratulated her on the win. Haryana government announced a reward of 2.5 crore rupees and a government job for her feet. <laughs> We are proud and we are so happy. That at least the beginning, it's already begun that it's too late, but we have started that we got the medal today. With the men wrestlers yet to start their campaign, India will now hope for more medals from the event as they look to finish their Rio campaign on a high. Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV.
And uh, let's uh, take you through uh, the other action that took place on day 12 of the Games. Host Brazil, in fact, reached the finals of the men's football to set up a final clash with Germany. In athletics, Jamaica's Elaine Thompson won the Olympic gold in the 200 metres to complete a sprint double. Here's more. Hosts Brazil thrashed Honduras 6-0 to advance into the men's football final. Brazilian captain Neymar scored a brace, including the fastest goal in Olympic history. Gabriel Jesus also scored two goals with Marquinhos and Luan adding one each. Brazil will now face Germany in the final on Saturday. The Germans swept past Nigeria 2-0 in the other semi-final clash. É um lugar especial, eu fui nascido e criado aqui do lado, é, é o bairro onde eu fui nascido. Então, com certeza, para mim vai ter um sabor especial, principalmente por ser um título que o Brasil nunca, nunca conquistou. In athletics, Jamaica's Elaine Thompson won the Olympic gold in the 200 meters event to complete a sprint double in Rio. Thompson clogged 21.78 seconds to beat Netherlands world champion Daphne Schippers by 0.13 seconds. The 24-year-old had earlier claimed gold in the 100 meter event. You have to have a strong heart and a strong mind. And I think I'm one of those persons with a determined mind. So to, came, to come out here tonight, proclaiming the goal, it's very marvelous. Meanwhile, Usain Bolt ran his fastest time of the season to reach the 200-meter finals in 19.78 seconds. However, Bolt's compatriot Johan Blake and his rival American Justin Gatlin missed out on a place in the final. Bolt has already won the 100 meters and is now aiming for an eighth Olympic gold by retaining his 200 meters title. My ankle's messing up on me in the, in the warm area, but, you know, fatigue set in. Coming home, but happy to happy to still be here, get ready for the football one. In wrestling, Japanese wrestler Kaori Icho became the first woman to win individual gold medals at four consecutive Olympics. The 32-year-old beat Russia's Valeria Koblova to win the 58 kg freestyle wrestling division. In hockey, a defending Olympic champions Netherlands reached the final of the women's competition after beating Germany 4-3 on penalties. They will next meet Great Britain in the final. In table tennis, China completed their sweep of the gold medals after their men's team defeated Japan 3-1 in the final. With the win, the Asian powerhouse has now won 28 out of 32 goals awarded since table tennis became an Olympic sport in 1998. In the overall medals tally on day 12, the United States leads the table with 93 medals that includes 30 gold, 32 silver and 31 bronze. Britain stands at the second spot with 19 golds. China retains the third spot with 54 medals that includes 19 gold, 15 silver and 20 bronze. While India finally got a breakthrough by winning a bronze medal in wrestling. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And that's what we have for you in the news tonight. Thank you so much for joining us.